Hello and welcome to the Heaven and Earth Show. We've got very, very special guests here and they're going to be quizzed on their beliefs by our studio audience here in Manchester. So let's meet the panel. If you visit Dr. Musharraf Ali's waiting room, you could find yourself sitting next to the likes of Prince Charles, Jerry Halliwell and Kate Moss. Dr. Ali trained as a conventional doctor in Delhi, but now practices his own blend of Eastern and Western medicine, including massage, yoga, homeopathy, acupuncture, and spiritual wisdom. Simon Woodruff is the founder, owner, and driving force behind the restaurant chain Yo Sushi. Now, Graham Taylor has been a policeman, a record company plugger, a vicar, and an exorcist. Now, he's a best-selling children's author whose novels deal in the dark side of spirituality. It's kind of described as a Harry Potter meets Stephen King. And Edwina Curry shared a schoolroom in Liverpool with Paul McCartney and George Harrison. She went into a career in politics, rising to become a controversial Minister for Health under Margaret Thatcher. When she lost her seat in 1997, though, she turned to writing, producing a series of steamy novels about sex and scandal in the corridors of power. That's today's panel. Those who are searching for spiritual answers aren't necessarily searching for God, are they? Well, uh, let me tell you this. I did part of my studies in Moscow, in Russia, during the Soviet era. There was no such thing as God. The whole country was atheist. You know, there was a big spiritual vacuum. But I knew the KGB was running after people who were following Krishnites, people who were doing meditation things. They were mm. trying to thrash them out. They created a spiritual vacuum there. So when the system collapsed, what happened? They all rush to the churches, they all rush to the thing. Ultimately, there's a natural urge so there's a it's seed in, in us, us right. to seek for that. And I saw I'm, it happening. I'm I look sure. at the two words, mantra and tantra. Man means mind, tra is the instrument. You use the mind as an instrument to connect with the great overall divinity. And tra, if you talk about tantra, tan means body, mm. then you use the body, whether it is through physical exercises, whether it is through various... Uh, sort of practices, rituals. So, you know, you, you, these are prayers. These are forms of prayers. Yeah. And the next question comes from Stephanie Brooks. Stephanie, you're a spiritual healer. What do you want to ask? Do the panel believe in spiritual healing and would you ever go to a spiritual healer? And if so, how would you, you choose one? You ain't for business here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually my father who's a healer and okay. I'm sort of learning at the moment. Would right. you ever go to a spiritual healer? Well, you know what, there's an obvious person to ask. Let's just ask him. Dr. Ali, I mean, this is what you do, isn't it, for the, the, the rich and the famous? They come well, to you I, and they say, I spiritually heal them, heal me. but I don't necessarily spiritually heal well, them. Well, what is, first of all, can you define spiritual healing? What, is, what does that mean? See, you see, the way, there are different ways of looking at it. You see, there's mind, body, and the spirit. I, I come to you with a, an illness. Yes. I, have, I have a serious medical condition. Yeah. Through Reiki and through acupuncture Healing and, all the, or and la the laying on of hands. Or, can you cure me? Well, no. I, as a doctor, first of all, I have to find out what, what is wrong with you. And then I would start off with the body because the body is the temple in which the soul thrives. If you don't look after your body. So those, now, things, can't, uh, so those things won't cure me then? I mean, I'd still have to go to medicine to cure me. You have to start with the body. As I said, that without that, for example, and if you say a hyperactive child, yeah. you, you ask the parents, the hyperactive child would be eating a lot okay. of sweet well, things. Let, let, let me, no, there's a it. difference between healing and spiritual healing. Yeah. Now, if you knock your knee onto the edge of the table, the first thing you do is to rub it. You put your hands on, you know, and the pain goes. You get a headache, touch your forehead, the headache goes. Now, you are transmitting. There's no doubt that there's a certain amount of biological aura. Yeah. We have photographed it, we have evidence of it, yeah, and there is no doubt about it. Okay, I well, can do experiments here with you <laughs> to show no, that we right. have healing it's, it's, it's you're, right. you're all right, Dr. Alec. <laughs> it's all right. S science, can it go too far, do you think? Well, in medicine it has, because what we have done is we have created a barrier by bringing in all these sophisticated tests, breaking the human body and the cells into small parts, studying the parts, studying the chemistry, studying the mathematics. But where is the logic gone? You see, we are part of nature. There are certain cyclical things. You know, you have the day-night cycle. You have day hormones, night hormones. You have the monthly periods in women. You have uh, the seasonal diseases. So there is a cycle going on. Mm -hmm. so, if, so what science has done to medicine is, it's taken it away. You can sit in front of a computer, feed in the symptoms, and out comes the remedy. You know, 
But that's not the way because you are dealing with a human being. The object of labor. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Ali, is it part of the evolutionary process that one day we're just going to accept the fact that actually partners for life, it doesn't necessarily mean life. We can't yeah, we change it. every seven years. Zero to seven years. If boys and girls, if they're dressed the same, they're given the same toys, they're, they're put in the same room, it'll be very difficult to distinguish them. Seven to 14, another change. 14 to 21, that's when they really diverge. And 21 to 28, that's when they form relationships, think about families. 28 to 35, they have children. 35 to 42, they have affairs. 42 to 49, 49 come to the menopause. When but when the, you when come to when 70, the, when the, the men and women, they begin to look alike. Yeah. Yeah. They begin to sound alike. They begin to behave alike. And they're very bonded. Unless you make changes all along, right. as you go along, yeah. because you must understand this magic seven, seven heavens, yeah. seven seas, yeah. seven colors, seven tastes, seven sounds. And sadly, seven seconds probably left to the end of this program. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure talking to you. My thanks to Dr. Ali, Simon Woodruff, Edwina Curry.